This is the homework for 2, 6, 2, 7, 2, 8, 2, 9, and 2, 10. Each new figure, write a linear equation that represents this pattern. So figure 0 has five, 5 tiles, and you're adding 7 tiles to each additional figure. So that's 5, and then there's 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7 plus 7, and here you have, um, you're multiplying 7, 7 multiplied by 1, 7 multiplied by 2, figure 3 would have 7 multiplied by 3, and you always have the first 5. That's the initial value, what you started with. So you can see that the rate of change is that it's increasing by 7 for every figure number. So we would use slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and we know we can use this formula because it's growing at a constant rate. And if it's growing at a constant rate, you know it's a linear equation. So the rate of change, the slope, the difference of the y's over difference of the x's, it's increasing by seven for every, for every tile, or increasing by seven tiles for every figure number. And so the rate of change is 7 over 1. And then we have the y-intercept, or figure 0. This is what you start with. So figure 0, we started with 5 tiles. So the equation would be y equals 7x plus 5. Once you come up with the equation, always uh, go back and check to make sure that it works. So for figure zero, if x is zero, we should have five tiles. Well, seven multiplied by zero plus five is five. So that works. But make sure you try it with several um, figure numbers. Or if you were given a, a, a table, go ahead and plug the values of the table in and make sure that it works. Problem two seven. Benjamin is taking Algebra 1 and is stuck on the problem shown below. Examine his work so far and help him by showing and explaining the remaining steps. So here's his, um, the original problem and he needs to simplify it. So there are two ways that you can go ahead and simplify it. Benjamin expanded it and you could go ahead and multiply the three threes, three multiplied by three multiplied by three, and then a's have the same base, a to the negative second power, and there you have the three, those three terms. And then b, the b term, you could use um, a placeholder for the exponent of one. And then you just go ahead and simplify these. The other way is to distribute the three to each term. And I went ahead to put um, a placeholder for the exponents, a, a, um, a value of one, three to the first power is just three, b to the first power is just b. So when you have an exponent to an exponent, a power to a power, you're multiplying. And the way I remember is this parenthesis and, um, and just to that, it's being multiplied. So we have three, multi three multiplied by one, three multiplied by negative two, and three multiplied by one, which we have here. And so now we can go ahead and simplify it. Three to the third power, three multiplied by one is three. So three to the third power is 27. Here, three multiplied by three is nine, multiplied by three is 27. Negative 2 multiplied by 3 is negative 6. Or when you're multiplying exponents with the same base, you add the exponents. Negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 2 is negative 6. And here we have b, 1 multiplied by 3 is 3, b to the third power. Or 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Now you can't have a negative exponent. You need to simplify that. And if you have a negative exponent in the numerator, 
you'll bring it down to the denominator. And so it'll be a to the sixth power. Problem 2, 8, examine the function h of x to find it right. Then estimate the values below. So h of 1, so remember, this is just what the x values mean. So x equals 1. So if x equals 1, h of x would be approximately 2. Anywhere around 2 would be acceptable. h of 3, so if x equals 3, h of x is going to equal about negative 4. Here it's saying x when h of x equals 0. Well, h of x is the y value, the output. These are the input values. So this is just stating when y equals 0, what is x? So we're going nowhere on the, we're not going anywhere on the y-axis. And you can see this graph where it intersects the x-axis at negative 5, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. For d, h of negative 1, so x equals negative 1, we're trying to find h of x, what y equals. So when h of x equals negative 1, y or it, um, h of x will be approximately negative 2. e, h of negative 4. So when x equals negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. h of x, or the output, would equal approximately 13. Problem 2-9, you need to calculate the value of each of the following expressions. So our first expression, you want to follow order of operations, GEMDAS. So G for grouping, we don't have any grouping symbols, but we do have an exponent. So we're going to simplify 7 squared, which is 7 multiplied by 7, which equals 49. Now we, we're done with exponents. We're going to do multiplication and division from left to right. So we have multiplication. 6 multiplied by 49 equals 294. So I simplified the numerator. Now I'm going to go down to the denominator. So we have 3 plus 3, which equals 6. Now we're going to simplify the ratio. 294 divided by 6 equals 49, and 49 plus 11 equals 60. Problem 29B, follow order of operations, GEMDAS, and we have to do grouping first. Well, we do have grouping symbols here, these parentheses, so we need to simplify what's in the parentheses. 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 equals 3. No more grouping symbols, so we go to exponents, and now we have 5 to the third power, and that's 5 multiplied by 5, which is 25, multiplied by 5, which is 125. No more exponents. Now we do multiplication and division. We don't have any multiplication or division, so we're Addition and subtraction from left to right. So we're going to start on the left-hand side. 125 plus 8 is 133. Minus 6 equals 127. 29C. We have to simplify this expression. So we're following order of operations, GEMDAS. And grouping symbols. We're going to treat this radical sign as a grouping symbol. So we need to simplify um, what's under the radical. So now, and anytime you're, you have grouping symbols, you always start the order of operations over. So if you had um, parentheses with inside that, the 
grouping symbols, you would start there. But we don't, we have exponents. So we're going to um, simplify the exponents. 3 squared and 4 squared. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. Now we can go ahead and simplify this further. 9 plus 16 is 25. Square root of 25 equals 5, and 5 minus 5 equals 0. Problem 210, we need to find the measures of the missing angles. So we have here two parallel lines cut by two transversals. And the only measure we have is this one here. And when I'm trying to find the, um, the unknown measures, what I do is I create these beach balls. And, and that's what I call them. And so, and you can see that I have blue, green, blue, green. And same in the bottom right, blue, green, blue, green. And I, I follow that pattern all the way around. And the reason why is because all of the um, same colors of these beach balls will have the same measure. Now, you have to justify why. Well, these two angles are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So if this is 74 degrees, this is 74 degrees. These two angles are congruent. You can see they're the same color, but these are corresponding angles. I also call them course sliding because they just slide right up or slide right down, but um, they're called corresponding angles. And you can see that these two are congruent. These are alternate exterior angles. And then here you have vertical angles, or these two are congruent because these are alternate interior, 74. We can also do chorus sliding, if this is 74, so corresponding angles, 74, or alternate interior angles. Same thing here, corresponding angles. are congruent, corresponding angles are congruent, alternate exterior or vertical angles are congruent, corresponding, vertical, alternate interior angles are congruent. So I justified why all of these have the same measure, but it's really easy to see when you do these colored beach balls. Now to get the green, the measure of the green angle, <clears throat> you have a line. And a line has a measure of 180 degrees. So if this is 180 degrees, <clears throat> and you're subtracting this, because you only want the green, so you have 180 minus 74 equals 106 degrees. And the measure of these two angles add up to 180 degrees. And now that we know that, here we have vertical angles. They're congruent. And then we can go ahead and use the same justifications for all of the other green angles that we used for the blue angles. Alternate exterior angles are congruent or corresponding angles. Vertical angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate exterior angles are congruent or vertical angles are congruent. Alternate interior, alternate exterior or vertical angles are congruent.